WWE Payback 2017 has come to a close, and it has, and it wasn't a very big pay per view because it wasn't supposed to be a very big pay per view. This was basically payback for a lot of things, including WrestleMania and including a couple of feuds. And it's like, I'm very surprised about a couple of results here. I am, because I didn't think a couple of things were going to go a certain way. And none of, it, none of it really pissed me off. But there was a couple of iffy things that happened. And when I make a prediction video, I tend to hold myself accountable. So these are the results, in my opinions, of WWE Payback 2017. You know, it's funny. I went with Enzo and Cass, but I actually was like, I wasn't, I wasn't going to be surprised if the Anderson and Gallows actually took the match. But Enzo and Cass ended up pulling it off. But as I said in my prediction video, this doesn't really mean anything. It's not like it's for a number one contendership. I mean, and it was on a fucking pre-show. So it's like, eh, yeah, it was payback, technically. But still, I'm just not, it, it was nothing, really. It was absolutely nothing. I don't see any, like, good things about this. Because, again, it's not like Enzo and Cass are going to receive a shot at the Tag Team Championships anytime soon. Which they should, but looks like they're just not going to. Enzo and Cass wins, and now what's left for Anderson and Gallows at this point? They're already former tag team champions, and I don't think they're going to be getting another title shot, but who knows? I could be wrong, but yeah, Enzo and Cass win, so oh well. Like this was going to go any other way. The Miz tries to run down Finn Balor, and Finn Balor basically did what he did as far as... <sighs> Again. Did you actually think this was going to go any differently? Um, I didn't think so. Unless a match would have started. But, yeah. It's, this was a Miz TV thing. And Finn Balor just basically... You know... <laughs> took down the Miz. <laughs> like I said before, anyone surprised... Why was this on the pre-show? Why wasn't there a match? Why? Now this result is a little bit interesting because I thought that Kevin Owens was going to retain because of course we all know that Jericho is going to be leaving and he's going to be touring with Fozzie. I, I was like, whoa, Jericho actually won and became the United States champion, and Owens actually fucking tapped out. So where are they going to go? Jericho versus AJ5 or a triple threat match? Who knows? A triple threat with all three of the motherfuckers? That would be a classic if done right. But AJ versus Jericho hasn't really disappointed either. So, again... I'm just surprised that Jericho actually won and he made Owens tap. And now he's once again the United States champion. And he's going to SmackDown. So congratulations to Chris Jericho. And I was wrong. So I actually got the results wrong, but it doesn't really matter because... Neville was still the Cruiserweight Champion. It was, it was a cool match up until a certain point. And then you got Neville that got himself disqualified. Oh well. That's heel tactic. He's still the King of the Cruiserweights. He's still champion. I thought that result was going to be the way it was. I thought that he was just going to retain. But he lost the match, but he's still Cruiserweight Champion. So... Who is next in line to challenge this guy? I, I mean, it's just... Yeah. 
<laughs> I didn't think that Austin Aries was going to get it at a place like Payback. Not a meaningless pay-per-view like that, but once again, Neville is still your Cruiserweight Champion. And like I say, who is next in line to challenge him? Now, the funniest thing about this is that as soon as the whole handshake thing began, everybody knew that that wasn't going to last. Between Cesaro and Sheamus, and then you have the returning Hardys, the Hardys were not going to be transitional champions. I didn't think so, even though it wouldn't have surprised me if, Anders, if, if fucking Sheamus and Cesaro would have gotten back to tag team championships, but I just didn't see that happening. All I saw was the Hardys winning and then an implosion, and looks like there's a heel turn between Cesaro, at least. Sheamus was already a tweener, so again, this there's no harm, no foul here. Because maybe, just maybe, Cesaro will do something to actually be taken 100% seriously. I was hoping for a cesaro Sheamus breakup at some point and Cesaro going to our world, or in this, case, in this case, Universal Championship, but... And there was even rumors that the Hardys were maybe going to lose because they were going to actually become the Broken Hardys, and the whole delete, delete, delete was going to actually take control, but that didn't happen here. So... The Hardys retain, and Sheamus and Cesaro attack the Hardys after the match, trying to decimate them to make a statement. Again, I saw that coming. I didn't think that there was going to be just holding hands and handshakes. No, I, I'm, I'm glad for this result. I really am. Because, again, I hope, I really hope they actually do something with Cesaro in the near future. Okay, so I, I admit it. I didn't see this happening. I didn't see Alexa Bliss beating Bailey this soon, especially in the hometown of Bailey at a pay-per-view. Um, so you're telling me that Bailey gets past Charlotte, Bailey main events WrestleMania, and then she coughs it up in her hometown against Alexa Bliss. So now Alexa Bliss is a three-time women's champion, but it's interesting that she's the first woman to hold us Raw Smack and Raw and SmackDown women's titles. And it's kind of you know sad that Charlotte wasn't the first to receive that accolade. I mean, she missed it by like a couple of days, especially because. She had interference in her match, but to know, but again, Alexa Bliss is now your new Raw Women's Champion. Okay, so we're gonna get rematches, or we're gonna get Sasha chasing. We're we're gonna get that, but at this time, it's like, yeah, wow, Bailey coughing it up that soon. Like I said, I didn't think it was gonna happen, but it happened. Pretty good match too. It, it was, but it was no Charlotte versus Sasha. You know, during the match, you know, her head got targeted on turbuckles and things like that. And ring posts, I'm talking about Bailey. So, Alexa, she took advantage. And she actually fucking won. I'm impressed that she won. I didn't see it coming, though. Congratulations to Alexa Bliss. Now, where is this roster going to go now? And when will... Fucking Nia Jax receive her one on one title shot and get the fucking title. Guys, ugh. ladies and gentlemen, I hated this. I really did hate it. And, okay, I hated the outside in that house part. I, I really hated that because to me it generally was just like it was very very fucking lame I, I didn't like this one bit 
They just uh, kept it in the ring because the most interesting things happened in the ring. And it was kind of crazy how, okay, they tried to make it like a scary fucking Saw, Child's Play, Nightmare on Elm Street type of thing with this House of Horrors. And I was just like, this is just totally fucking lame. Randy Orton and Blake Bray Wyatt throwing each other in things in the house and, and, and a fucking Orton gets trapped underneath a refrigerator and Wyatt leaves them there and and okay this was gonna be this was gonna finish in a ring so you knew that you knew that it wasn't gonna be settled at the house or someone was gonna get left and they they actually put it that it was gonna be settled by pinfall submission or forfeiture. Again, the most interesting things in this thing happened inside of the ring. Because as things went on in the ring, and things actually broke down in the ring, the Bollywood boys show up. They try to beat down Randy Orton, but to no avail. Orton hits the RKO on Bray Wyatt. And then Jinder Mahal, with the WWE title that he still has possession of, attacks Orton from behind and hits him with the belt twice. And then next thing you know, Sister Abigail, and, well, what do you know? Bray actually fucking wins. But again, it doesn't really fucking mean anything because it wasn't for the championship like it's like it was supposed to be. It was just, yeah, the, the lame was that House of Horrors garbage, and all of this should have happened inside of the ring. I don't care what anybody says, it should have happened inside of the ring. Bray Wyatt's your winner, but again, nothing fucking matters. Because it wasn't for the WWE Championship. People actually thought that Joe was going to win this match. And I just didn't see that for some reason. I didn't see Rollins getting payback on Triple H and then losing to Samoa Joe even though it kind of would have... Okay, it's not like that wouldn't have made any sense, but Joe's first loss against Seth Rollins doesn't hurt Joe. Okay, let, let, I, I, that's why I picked Seth. That's the main reason why I did pick Seth Rollins, because let's, let's face it, if Joe would have his first loss against someone that has zero meaning to us, or someone that we absolutely hate like Roman Reigns, then we wouldn't have like that at all but Seth Rollins beating Samoa Joe via a roll-up and it's funny because I actually said it was gonna be some type of roll-up in order to fucking do it and he did it but I thought that Rollins was gonna get destroyed after the match and that didn't happen Samoa Joe you know he was just like I can't believe I lost can't believe I lost but he didn't go ballistic and attack Rollins he didn't take Rollins down he didn't take Rollins out he didn't try to end him like I thought, he didn't try to make that statement. So that was the only part of the match that kind of disappointed me. It was afterwards. It was the aftermath. I just thought that Joe should have just went ballistic. Joe, Joe literally almost always goes ballistic. So I didn't understand why it wasn't done here. Yes, the leg was targeted all fucking match. We all knew that. And Seth Rollins, yeah, he performed pretty well despite the whole leg thing. But, again, the, Rollins was my pick, and, well, what do you know? He won, and that's all there is to it. Congratulations to Seth Rollins. Now, where do you go from here? Do you go to the Universal title? Does Finn Balor go to your Universal title? Or does the winner of the next match go to the Universal Championship? Funniest thing about this was I didn't care who won the fucking match. I just didn't. But Braun Strowman ends up winning because Roman Reigns all bandaged and taped up and things like that. Now you're telling me that okay, that was the only reason why that Braun Strowman actually fucking won. And Roman Reigns was trying to fend him off, fend him off, fend him off. We all expected the magically delicious Lucky Charms comeback from fucking Roman Reigns, but that didn't happen here. Now 
the main thing about it is, okay, does Braun Strowman challenge Brock Lesnar? Or is he done with Roman Reigns? Because even after the match, he still, okay, it took two power slams to beat Roman Reigns, first of all. And then after the match, steel steps, he, he laid him down and he actually put, like, <laughs> Roman Reigns' his head on the steel steps, and then he rammed the steel steps into his gut. Next thing you know, Roman Reigns is coughing out blood and trying to walk off. He didn't want the stretcher. He's uh, 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 being checked on, and no one is having concerns about this guy. I'm sorry. It's just no one was. So Roman Reigns was trying to walk out, walk out, walk out, gets to the fucking ambulance on his own, and, well, what do you know? Braun Strowman tries the attack. Roman Reigns moves out of the way, and Roman Reigns is actually getting the best of him of this attack. He fucking rams the fucking ambulance back door on Strowman. And it's like, God, please be. Ugh. All right. Even though I wanted this feud to continue, and I still do, because it keeps them both away from titles. But there have been certain people that have been saying that Braun Strowman should go for a championship. The Universal Championship. Maybe even the Intercontinental title. Who knows if that's going to actually fucking happen. But Braun Strowman winning after Roman Reigns beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Again, it's just... Roman Reigns should have never beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. That's just as simple as that. Because now, when he loses against anybody under any circumstance, it's like, okay, you know, against The Undertaker, it was no holds barred. And, yeah, I, anyway, Braun Strowman wins, and I just don't really care, because, again, where does this go? Where does this go? I mean, are they going to have another match? Who's going to go for the Universal Championship, if anyone? You have Finn Balor, you have Seth Rollins, and now, arguably, you have Braun Strowman that could go for the Universal Championship whenever Brock shows up. So that's the results of Payback 2017, and I'm just like, eh, it wasn't, yeah, a um, couple of surprises, like Jericho actually winning the United States Championship, that shocked me the most out of, the, out of everything the whole night. Um, Alexa Bliss winning the Women's Championship, the Raw Women's Championship, that kind of surprised me, but all the other results, pretty much... The way it was supposed to go, as far as payback, or as far as a match, or as far as retaining, or as far as getting disqualified to keep your belt, and so on. But let me know what you think about the show. What did you think about my opinions and my comments? Am I full of shit? Am I wrong about, you know, as, as far as, okay, the Hardys and Cesaro and Sheamus? Am I wrong about who's going to be the next challenger for the Universal title? Do you care about Roman Reigns? <laughs> Please, leave a comment below. I'm always open for a debate about wrestling. So, huh, payback. Wow. Jericho winning. Alexa Bliss winning. They both are champions now. Damn. Okay. Drop kicks, body slams, throw motherfuckers over the top rope, both be hitting the floor. Yes, I'm a wrestling fan. This is the theme, and I'll see you later. Credits.